in the final hours of the STS-34 launch countdown at this time. Everything is proceeding smoothly here in the firing room at the Launch Control Center and at Launch Pad 39B. A full five-day mission begins with the primary objective of deploying the Galileo spacecraft from the payload bay so it can begin its six-year journey to the planet Jupiter. Several scientific experiments will be conducted and orbiter detailed test objectives will also be performed during the mission. And we have the STS-34 flight crew uh, with a pumpkin decorated in an astronaut suit. We've got Commander Don Williams. This is going to be his second flight today. We've got Mission Specialist Franklin Chang Diaz making his second flight as well. Mission Specialist Shannon Lucid, this is uh, her second flight. And Mission Specialist Ellen Baker making her first flight today. Pilot Mike McCulley also making his first flight today. Flight crew will be departing for the launch pad in about an hour and 10 minutes or so after they get their weather briefing and uh, don their flight suits. Weather forecast for this morning remains the same with a 60% chance of not violating our weather criteria. They're called crew altitude protection systems and they have uh, consist of a helmet. These are pressurized garments and uh, they do wear gloves and boots. There's pilot Michael McCulley. This mission specialist, Shannon Lucid. Crew does need assistance getting into these suits. They are bulkier than the other suit that uh, were worn previous to uh, the STS-26 mission. This mission specialist, Franklin Chang Diaz. And we got the flight crew here, led by Commander Don Williams. STS-34 Commander Don Williams now preparing for his entry into Atlantis' crew module. Williams is a captain in the United States Navy. He was born in Lafayette, Indiana. Mission Specialist Shannon Lucid is being prepared to board the orbiter at this time. She was born in Shanghai, China, but considers Bethany, Oklahoma her hometown. 7 minutes 30 seconds, the orbiter access arm will be retracted away from the vehicle. Let me get a go for a flight before fast. PLS, entity. PLS will go for OAA retract. Go ahead, entity. Okay, 
figure to hold at five. Alpha clock will hold at T minus five for your request. We start a retraction of the orbiter's access arm. Engine flight two one two. Okay, we're going to be go on Tau, but we're going to have to switch sites to uh, Zaragoza. So we hold at T minus five. We can give the crew an update. At this time, the three main engines are being gimbaled and positioned for start. Liquid oxygen tank now reported at flight pressure. T-minus two minutes. Flight crew's been instructed to close their visors. Less than two minutes away now from launch. All systems are go. T-minus 31 seconds. We have a go for auto sequence start. Atlantis's four redundant computers have primary control of critical vehicle functions through liftoff. T-minus 20. He finds 15, 11, 10, 9. We have a go for main engine start. 6, 5, 4, 3, 2, 1. We have ignition and liftoff of Atlantis and the Galileo spacecraft bound for Jupiter. Houston now controlling. Roger roll, Atlantis. Roll program initiated, about a 110 degree roll maneuver. Guidance confirms a good roll maneuver. Three engines throttling back now to 65% uh, as Atlantis passes through the area of maximum dynamic pressure. Throttle's now at 65%. APU's looking good. Velocity, 2,000 feet per second. Velocity now 1,400 feet per second. Downrange distance, three nautical miles. Atlantis, go with throttle up. Engines now throttle back up. Engines now back to 104%. All systems performing well. Standing by for separation of these solid rocket boosters at 2 minutes and 4 seconds. Velocity now 2,700 feet per second. Downrange 10 nautical miles. Separation of SRBs confirmed. Velocity now 4,200 feet per second, downrange 33 nautical miles. Frank, it's an incredible ride. You look great. Congratulations to all of you. Houston. Houston, Atlantis. Roger, Shannon, it's been a long time coming, but you have a go for deploy. 
Okay, understand. We have a goal for deploy, so we're starting out on step five, the top of page four dash ten, and just pressing on. Roger, we concur with that. Shannon, thanks. Ground telemetry uh, is confirming Shannon Lucid's report of tilt table motion. The tilt table uh, was at 29 degrees. It's now moving up to an elevation of 58 degrees. That's the deploy attitude. The Sunnyvale flight director has just confirmed the successful deploy of the inertial upper stage and Galileo. Galileo reports positive telemetry of deploy. Also, we see the orbiter uh, performing a minus X translation maneuver to move away from the IUS Galileo stack. Atlantis, we copy. That's great news. Thanks. Is this the real life? Is this just fantasy? Caught in a landslide. No escape from reality.
we thank you, and we're sure glad you recognized it. On board the shuttle, we carry a first aid kit. Fits into one of these lockers, which is where we store most of the materials and experiments and day-to-day -day living items that we'll need. And our first aid kits carry pretty much what any doctor's black bag would carry. Only our kits look like this. See what you're doing here, Franklin. Put in, put in the pressure plate. Hold the film flat. And switch the exposure frame. Now, I'm gonna check the film here. So it flies good. Yeah. 
<laughs> There's Kenny Hawk. Got a 250. A Kenny Hawk might get us something. Yeah, he got it. There's six weights and chips. better uh, 
uh, of course, if we uh, provide these pictures in color, uh, that that ought to be the next step, probably. Maybe for the next uh, camcorder that we fly, we can fly this sort of thing uh, with a with a C mount, C -mount and uh, mount the fiber optics on it. But uh, as you can see, we can do uh, real time uh, diagnostics uh, from space. Good morning, Atlanta. Hello, TJ. We send you the best from Northern Australia. It's a little dark out our windows, but I expect it's probably uh, about time to get off third shift where you are. That's affirmed, Don. Um, your execute package should be on board. You can hear the whine of the WCS, and Franklin is getting prepared for his international phone call. His hair is full of soap. I don't know how he's going to get it out. Well, our hair is clean now. Uh -huh. Time to shave. He looks good. Look at that hair. Gonna put the rest of us to shame, Franklin. Look this way. This is the sound of the treadmill. Okay, get this on Ben Burt's tape. Yeah. Hey, Mike. Get this on Ben Burt's tape.
It's probably tough when you're competing with a couple of maggots. Yeah, it's tough. down here and the lockers set, set up here for PM. What you can see is uh, the, uh, the actual computer uh, where all that information is being stored and the canister, which is this one right here, which contains a very large number of cells uh, which are being uh, um, processed and where all the samples are. There is a carousel inside this canister that uh, rotates and positions, positions the cell so that the, uh, uh, the uh, interferometer can look through the windows of the cells and then derive the data. And uh, inside also the center of the canister, there is a, uh, a source of infrared light, which is very carefully maintained. And that's why we had at the, at the, beginning, uh, uh, the beginning part of the, uh, of the mission uh, we had a little bit of problem with the uh, with the uh, steadiness of that uh, of that temperature, and we were able by uh, communicating with uh, Dr. Cook, Cook on the ground. You guys uh, working this problem, uh, we were able to recover the uh, the functioning of the uh, of the uh, um, STIR to a level where we could use it, and it's been working like a champ uh, all this time. And when the sample is uh, molten, uh, it begins to uh, cool it down on a step function, uh, a steep uh, trajectory down to another temperature, which uh, looks like is about 125 or so degrees, at which time it holds it there for the remainder of the, or most of the, the, the time. And we're up to the six hour mark right now since that sample has been cooking, cooking along there. And eventually, at some point, uh, about, uh, 90, uh, about 19 hours or so, or 18 and a half, uh, it'll uh, stop uh, that uh, steady state, and it'll bring it down back to room temperature. And all this time, the, uh, the infrared uh, instrument uh, is uh, the, the infrared is interferometer that's inside the uh, PM uh, experiment is taking data about what the uh, structure of the crystals in the, uh, in the polymer, uh, which is the kind of thing that we're looking at right now is polymers, uh, the structure, the crystal structure in that polymer, uh, what it looks like. And it gathers all that data and stores it into a computer, which is uh, right here on board. It's not this computer that you're looking at, but it's another computer, uh, which is in one of the canisters down in the lockers. And all that data then is uh, then collected, uh, and uh, when we come back to us, uh, why the uh, the people at uh, 3M, uh, Dr. Cook, and all his colleagues will uh, analyze it and hopefully discover or perhaps tell us uh, something new about how polymers behave in zero g. I don't I don't know if you can see the lightning. It's, it was over the last two passes over the African uh, continent, the southern portion of the continent. And uh, of course, it was done with a with a black and white camera uh, for low light sensitivity. This is a live downlink coming to you now. If you can see that, uh, perhaps you can see the same sort of thing we're looking at. And we see it. Uh, and we see it. Uh, yeah, it looks great. Talking about how we wish we had uh, color so we could see it down here. They're spread it out mostly 
we switch to uh, live crystal growth. Roger, understand. Swelling inject ten cc's of water. So I'll be there. Uh, this morning when I got up, I took a scope deck. y'all are doing, Alan. We hope that it makes our flights better. Okay, flight day four, transcranial blood flow. Shannon and Dom. This is Ellen taking blood pressure. Boy, look at that concentration.
saw a ready light on PM. Could you check that for us? He expected, he expected something different. No one said to look at the camera, but what we're talking about is tags. And the, and the, you can see this last piece of paper. If you look carefully, I'm not sure how good it comes down, Jim, but it's bowing. It's, it's got a lot around us, and here comes the other one on top of it. To the top of the tray, and this is the sort of thing I was talking about earlier. The very little room left in here. It, it tends to pack it, but uh, there's a lot of uh, curvature that takes place in the thing. But anyway, we're really happy with it. We, the uh, the quality again has been excellent, particularly on the uh, the reproductions of the of the ghost satellite information, the the things that you all have put on top of uh, orbital information and times. The quality of that uh, print has been good, and the quality of all the messages. on the growth hormone uh, concentration, distribution, and plants experiment. We have four containers that have corn seedlings in them, and we are going to freeze two of those four containers, and post-flight, post-flight, Dr. Bandusky and his team will be examining the corn seedling for uh, growth hormone. You know, plants tend to grow upwards in the uh, spongy environment, and we're not exactly sure how the growth hormone will be distributed uh, in this weightless environment. this little nitrogen freezer on board here, and Shannon just put one of the canisters into the freezer. Atlanta, Houston, the lake bed is go, and you're go for deorbit burn. Go for the burn. Thank you, sir. Roger that. Atlanta should cross the California coast at about uh, Mach 4 at an altitude of 105,000 feet, approximately uh, over Malibu, California. Television cameras at Edwards have picked up a visual on uh, Atlantis. Now at uh, Mach 2, 77,000 feet altitude, 48 miles away.
Velocity now Mach 1.6, altitude 69,000 feet, 38 miles out. Atlantis now over Roseman Dry Lake Bed. Atlantis Houston, your nav looks good. You can disregard the nav edit message and hold on uh, air data to nav. Roger. Velocity now 900 feet per second, altitude 41,000 feet. Atlantis Houston, take air data to nav. Air data to nav. Atlantis Houston, you're looking great. Turn it on the hack. Surface is clear. Altimeter is 3019. 3019, okay. Atlantis now right on the uh, imaginary line around the heading alignment circle. Velocity is 500 feet per second, 5,800 feet altitude. Range, three miles. Landing gear down and long. Main gear touchdown. And nose gear touchdown. And Atlantis rolls out at the conclusion of mission STS 24, 34, correction. Unofficial main gear touch time, touchdown time was uh, at uh, 9.33 a.m. Pacific Daylight Time. Roger, Atlantis, congratulations on an outstanding mission. You've extended the shuttle's reach to the outer planets. Bravo, Zulu. Thank you, sir. It's nice to be home. Roger that. Uh, Mike, we'd like APU-1 yeah, we shut down, please. It didn't work. And yeah, stand by for the with that, you guys, so it's super support. Roger, thank you, sir. STS-34 uh, crew led by Commander Don Williams coming down the uh, stairs at Dryden. There to uh, greet them is Admiral Richard Truly, Administrator of NASA, 
Dr. Bill Lenore, the Associate Administrator for Space Flight, J.R. Thompson, the uh, Deputy Administrator, and uh, Michael Coates, astronaut, as well as Don Putty, Director of Flight Crew Operations at Johnson Space Center.